Let's make a cozy, low-poly interior in Blender. I drew this quick little sketch to sort of build up the idea. So the idea is to take the default cube of Blender and turn it into a simple cage and then model the interior inside that cage. Now, this will not be a complete step-by-step -step tutorial. Instead, I will show you the whole process in a time-lapse format and then share a couple specific tips along the way. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to do is to turn this default cube into a simple cage. A quick way to do that is to first inset all the faces by double tapping I to inset individual faces. And then I'll zoom really close to one corner and choose the extrude along normals tool. And I'll go to the tool settings to change the drag option to active tool to be able to extrude without the gizmo visible. And then I'll extrude and sort of eyeball that the three vertices touch on the inside. It doesn't have to be a very precise model for this purpose. And now what you do is you just delete the faces that are selected and select everything, Alt M to merge, and you select the by distance option. And as you can see here, it removed 16 vertices and now this is only one vertex. And the cage is pretty much complete. Now I'll just replace the hole in the bottom with a simple floor. And then it's time for a modeling time lapse. Let's talk about ego and thinking for a bit while the time lapse is running. A lot of wiser people than me say that you could always be happy and peaceful just by learning to let go of your ego. They think that the sense of self is just an illusion and that the thoughts running around in your head are an optional nuisance and that we'd be better off not thinking most of the time. How weird is that? To not think most of the time. But just try to not have a single thought in your head for like a minute. It's hard. But the main idea is definitely not to never think. The main idea is to not identify yourself with those thoughts. You know, sort of observing the thoughts from outside of the thinking mind. And I think it's very much worth practicing. I've already seen a lot of improvement in my ability to get above many frustrating situations. They often turn out to be very insignificant when you just manage to not let the negative thoughts and feelings tell you what to think. But let's take a short break from the philosophy and I'll show you another Blender tip. So let's say I make an end cap here to the end of the pole, well, maybe something like this. And I want to make the same kind of thing done at the bottom here. But now my view is centered around this upper end. And I want my view to be centered down there, obviously. So what I did for a long time is I would select a face, view selected, zoom out, reposition a bit. And now I'm where I want to be. But that's a lot of steps, especially if you have to do it many times in a row. So let's go back here. What's much quicker is to just point the mouse on the surface that you want to go to and press Alt plus the middle mouse button. And it centers on the surface under your mouse. And it's right there. No more selections, no more X-ray, nothing. And now I can do my thing, maybe like this. And the best thing is that it works for any surface in the scene, in any mode. And it's also one step quicker than to use the 3D cursor for centering. So yeah, that's a little tip for you. I've found it very handy. Okay, back to time-lapse philosophy. The thing where you observe your everyday mental happenings from outside of them is sometimes called presence or awareness. The presence is above your thinking mind. You're sort of just purely consciously existing. If and when thoughts and emotions arise in the foreground, you sort of observe them from the background. It's funny that the state of presence is often described as a deeply happy and peaceful experience, although happiness and peacefulness are emotions, and there's supposed to be no emotions in the pure state of presence. Maybe there's just not a good vocabulary to talk about these things. In our communication we are inherently confined in the box of things that can be described by words. Words that are inherently products of thinking. The state of presence is trying to rise above thinking, so talking about it is very difficult. Could there be some other types of emotions than the ego-driven, mostly negative ones? I sometimes have experiences of these feelings that don't seem to come from me. They are something more universal, coming from the outside. They are mostly very beautiful and positive feelings, but there can be some melancholic ones also. Where do they come from? Is the fact that they seem to be coming from outside just an illusion, or could they be something bigger than us individuals? I don't know. Hopefully someday I will. Okay, another tip. So I have this pot here, 
and I want to have a vine growing out of it, sort of around this pole here. And first of all, I'll make a new collection here. So I have sort of a clean environment to work in for a moment. And I'll make a very simple leaf model. We will use this leaf model in a moment when making the actual vine. And for making the vine, I'll use the sapling tree generation add-on. You might already know about it, but if you don't, you can just go here, edit, preferences, add-ons, and search for the sapling add-on, and just enable it from here. So then you can press F3 and search for the sapling operator and press enter. And you can already see that we have a lot going on. So this is basically a procedural tree and bush generator. And you can expand this little menu from here to get more options for how you want your tree to look. But this is not a sapling tutorial. There's plenty of those on YouTube if you want more info on that. I just want to show you how to make the generated straight vine go around the pole with the curve modifier. So as you can see, there's all these different categories for all the settings. And there's also these presets. And I've already made my own preset for the vine. So I'll just use that. And here's a screenshot of all the settings if you want to copy them over for your project. So now all we need to do is to go to the leaves section and enable show leaves. And right now it's taking the wall object for every leaf. So we obviously want to change that. And we'll take the leaf object that we made earlier. You can play with these values. They're not complicated. You'll eventually get something like this. I might actually decrease the number of leaves a bit. Yeah, I think 30 is okay. And I think I'll actually make the branches a bit shorter. Maybe something like this. So it looks good now, but our leaves are pointing in the wrong direction. But that's easily fixed just by rotating this leaf object here. I want this vine to be a one simple object. Right now it's this leaf instancing object and this curve trunk object. So what I'll do is I'll move this leaf object into a new collection. And then I'll press F3 and search for make instances real. So now all of these leaves are real objects and not just instances. So now I can take this original leaf instancing object and delete that. Then we can delete the original leaf object and join all the leaves into one object. Then select the trunk object, right click, convert to mesh, shade flat, and join the leaf object with that. And now we have a one single simple vine object. So now we finally get to the curve part. So I'll go to the interior and position this vine in the right place. Something like that. And I'll make a new Bezier curve. I will sort of wrap the curve around the pole like this. And it will act as a deformation guide for the vine object. You want to make sure that the origin points of both the vine object and the curve object are in the same place. And then you can select the vine object and go to the modifiers panel and add a curve modifier here and select the curve we just created. Set the deformation axis to Z and the vine will grow around the curve. You can scale it up along the Z axis to make it grow a bit taller and make some tweaks to the curve object if you want to. And when you are happy with it, you can just apply the modifier and delete the curve object. And if you want to, you can tweak the leaves and stuff like that to make it a bit more natural and lively looking. The other day when I was walking to a grocery store to get some lunch, I had a very vivid and intense music listening experience. I've been practicing mental presence and thoughtless awareness, and I was listening to some old favorites that had gone a bit stale from too much listening over the years. But this time was very different. Music sometimes seems to help me to get into the present moment and to stop thinking rational thoughts. But again, it's a relatively emotional experience and the blurry distinction between ego-driven emotions and these, what I think are some other types of emotions, keeps bugging me a bit. Some of you might be wondering why I put so much thought into dissecting emotions like this. But I think the impact that emotions have on us is generally very underappreciated. People like to think that they are rational and make rational decisions. But because it's so hard to even notice all the subconscious emotions, let alone not identifying yourself with them, it's very easy for the true extent of the effects of emotions to go unnoticed. 
Okay, the scene is finally ready, so without further ado, let's just watch it and see what it looks like. And there you have it, a nice looking, cozy, low poly interior. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.